Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp and we are in chapter one talking about the basics of the software testing and looking forward to our topic continuation which is principles of testing. In our previous tutorial we tried understanding three of them and it's time for us to understand some more today in this tutorial and we'll be looking for our very first tutorial uh, to understand about the next principle which is defects cluster together all right so the principle number four states uh, defects cluster together and it certainly the name suggests that there could be a possibility that defects can cluster together now cluster basically is all about grouping together gathering at a place and uh, we are talking about the defects grouping now what could be defects grouping or gathering will be all about uh, when we talk about testing, right? Uh, we certainly have defects distributed across the system generally. Now you have to hit every corner of the system in order to find as many defects as possible during your testing course. But when it comes to certain areas, there might be a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, which may exist in a particular module, in a particular functionality, or it could be about a particular specific feature which you might have implemented at every place within the application. So when it comes to testers and their approach to uh, find defects in the application, we should not be ignoring that there might be a possibility that a particular module can have any number of defects. And uh, we should not be just uh, considering, considering them all the time independent. Now, for example, I might be dealing with a complex module and the possibility says that uh, there might be a lot of issues. And when you started testing, you had a great set of uh, test cases with you and uh, that all worked fine. So the point now is that does that mean the complex module being defect free will uh, convey us that the smaller modules will have no defects, right? That does not certainly make any sense. So we being a tester, we should be curious about finding defects irrespective of the sizes of the modules or depending on the complexity level of a module. Because it's a very common intuition. When you find a difficult and complex module with no defects or less defect, you create an assumption that the smaller and the simpler modules will not have any defects at all. And you reduce your effort on the simpler part of it. But it might be possible that due to the overconfidence there might be a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes, which would have been done in the simpler modules. So being a tester, we are not driven by the output of critical items or complex modules being tested. We are, in fact, independent of those items before we test any module, right? And the other sense of understanding of the clustering of defects is also to say, if in case I'm testing a particular web page and I have a text field uh, which is labeled as name and we all, all understand that the validation for the name field is to accept characters alone and no numbers, no alphanumeric or anything else, right? Only characters must be accepted. But if in case I find a defect, right? I figure out that the name field is not working or behaving as expected. That means it is accepting numbers then it's my responsibility to make sure that I test all the text fields which are there in the application. Because this, is a, this could be a possibility of common mistake what a developer would have done across all the text fields. Maybe for the phone number, he would have done something else, or maybe for the address, maybe for the email ID. There are so many hell out of uh, text boxes in your application. So if you figure out that one of the... Uh, element one of the object is having an issue there could be a pattern so that's also related to the defect clustering concept that if a certain standard object has any issues identified you make sure that this similar object or any duplicate objects or anything which is copying those object properties here and there because quite often the developers clone them or copy from the existing so it's possible that they would have copied the attribute and properties as well, and they may not be working. So you look forward to all the text fields and make sure that you verify them.
right? So I hope that pretty much makes sense what the DeFit clustering together principle is all about. And being a tester, we should be considerate about those principles while testing the application. Stepping into the next one, and uh, this principle number five is called as beware of pesticide paradox. Now, be aware of pesticide paradox. Uh, seems like a very kind of, you know, medical term, uh, pesticide paradox. Uh, pesticide comes from uh, more of like killing a pest. And uh, paradox is more of like a medical term that it is a belief system that makes you believe that you're right, right? So beware of pesticide paradox was used as a concept from the agriculture domain where it was used for farmers and the agriculturists uh, who used to do farming, right? Now, assume that there was a farmer and he had some crop in the field and uh, one fine day he identified that the crop was attacked, uh, attacked by the pest. Now, he just went to the agriculturist and tried uh, consulting him for what could be the best medicine for it, right? The best pesticide in order to kill those pests, which is eating those crops, right? So the agriculturist uh, recommended him pesticide X with quantity Q uh, to apply in the field and he will be soon having the you know crops free from the pest. So he bought the pesticide X and uh, applied quantity Q in the farm and uh, yeah, that's what that was a good result. You know, the pest disappeared, and his uh, plants and you know well, the crop was healthy again. Now, being excited about the outcome of this pesticide, uh, irrespective of thinking on the crop, he just applied the same test cases everywhere. Right? He just applied the same pesticide in all different types of crops, where different pesticides were attacking. Now, just because he had a great result out of the previous experience, without thinking, he used the same pesticide in all his other crops. Now, you don't have to be a farmer, you don't have to be an agriculturist to understand that different crops have different pests, and each pest have a different pesticide, because you don't eat the same medicine for all your problems. You have different medicines for different problems, right? The same way here. And this guy just ruined his entire farming because that was not the recommended pesticide there. Now, the point is, what we want to understand from this theory that when it comes to our testing, we have a module to test and we just put applied all our experience and understanding and uh, knowledge about testing and created certain set of test cases. We executed it and we realized that there are no defects. But you being confident enough that, no, that's not possible. There should be some defect. Because you have great intuition, you have a great experience, knowledge about the domain, and you think there could be some possible things wrong generally in these type of areas. So you went to the manager and requested him or her to rerun your task cases once again. No, no results again, right? Because you're running the same task cases on the same module, and of course it will yield you the same output. So all your task cases passed again. So the point here is to tell you that not always your weapon is the strongest on the enemy. You need to pick, the, pick up the right weapon. Maybe your test cases are not, uh, you know, not relevant to that particular defect what you're looking for. So instead of repeating the same test cases again and again in search of the defect, why don't you think of writing some new test cases? Revisiting, revising your test cases, writing some new test cases and hit the module. It's, it's very simple to understand when you talk about creating a plan to get great scores in an examination and you don't succeed, then there's no point following the same plan once again to succeed, right? There's something possible that your plan is not built up to succeed in that examination. You need to change your plan. Trying that same plan again and again will not yield you a success. So we just have to make sure that running the test cases again and again in search of defect with an intuition may not help. So instead of rerunning the same set of test cases, why don't you run different test cases or try writing some more test cases, some new test cases. So this principle was mainly created to overcome the a problem with the regression test suites. If you understand regression test suites right now, you understand that 
regression test suites are the one which are generally not revisited. I've got collection of 1000 test cases, 500 test cases, right? And every time I make an update, every time I have an enhancement to the application, I just run those 500 test cases. But you do understand that every time a new update has happened, there might be requirement of adding new test cases or retiring the existing ones, which might not be required any longer. So you try to put your effort in order to, you know, get into those understanding and make sure that you are be aware of pesticide paradox, which helps you to keep writing some new test cases. There's no point running the old test cases again and again in search of new defects. In order to find different defects, write some different test cases is what we mean to say here. I hope that makes pretty much sense to all of you. And that was all we had from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep ex exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.